winning winning blueprint presents in the Welcome. You are in the lab room. I'm your host, Luke. Thank you for joining me. It's Monday, and so there's a few things I want to get to here in the lab room. A couple of items I want to knock down quickly and then get out of here. Haven't been here in a while in the lab room, and so I felt I needed to kind of make my presence felt here in the lab room. There's a few topics to iron out. I said, why not? <laughs> So, let's start with the Dolphins signing Tyson Claybo, tackle formerly of the Atlanta Falcons. To me, that's a really good move. Saves you money. They were talking to some high-priced free agents, some guys that you would have had to shell out some dough for. And also with this move, what it does is it basically ends all trade talks to the Chiefs for Brendan Albert. And we saw that kind of quiet itself down in the draft. If they were going to trade for Brendan Albert, that would have been the time to do it. But by them going out and trading for Deion Jordan and moving up in the draft and selecting him, that kind of put that to rest. And look, they still had another pick that could have been tossed over to the Chiefs for Brendan Albert's services. But if I'm the Chiefs, I want that second round. And the Dolphins coupled that with their first rounder to go up to get Deion Jordan. And so I, I didn't think that deal was going to be done. Then we heard rumors of them possibly talking to ex-Chief, ex-Houston Texan Eric Winston. And so that kind of let me know they were going in a different direction. They didn't want to fork over any more picks. They had already done that to get Deion Jordan. They didn't want to give away future picks and have to Shell out a lot of dough. Brendan Albert looking for a deal. Of course, we know he's a franchise guy right now, so he does not have a long-term deal. And so he'd be looking to get paid as well. And the Dolphins just aren't looking to do that right now. They have enough big contracts under the books right now. And so they weren't looking to add another lengthy and huge contract onto their books. Smart move by the Dolphins going out and getting a cheaper option in Tyson Claybo. Now, again, I talked about dominoes falling from this move. A, getting Claybo does solve a need for the Dolphins. You needed a tackle. Now, we were debating whether it's right or left. You chose to go the right tackle route, which means this is domino A. Your right tackle is Claybo, so now your left tackle has to be Jonathan Martin. Your second round selection out of Stanford a season ago. So that solves one question and one answer to the riddle. We all were thinking, hey, is Martin on the right side? Is he on the left side? We all assumed that the Dolphins were comfortable with him at the right side and they were going to go pursue a left tackle. That's why the Brendan Albert trade rumors started to run rapid. However, they decided, hey, we think Martin is athletic enough, smart enough, and gritty enough to move to the left side. And we can just slide in someone else at the right tackle position. Enter Tyson Claybo. So that's domino number one. You look at domino number two. The Dolphins were the last real suitor for the services of Brendan Albert. So now the Chiefs have essentially been backed into a corner. You franchised him. You wanted him. Now you got him. You draft Eric Fisher at the top of the draft. Now what are you going to do? Are you going to force Albert to play right tackle? Are you going to force him to play guard? What are you going to do? Sounds like the Chiefs have already made good with Brendan Albert. He said, hey, I'm going to report to Chiefs camp. I'm okay. I don't have a long-term deal in hand, which I would like. But hey, that's down the road. That's no here nor there. I'm back. Which means 
He's happy. And if he's happy, that means the Chiefs have told him, hey, you're our left tackle. So that's the other domino that falls from this thing is the Dolphins are no longer interested. The Chiefs have been batting into a corner. Now they have to make good with Brendan Albert. They have. He's their left tackle. So that means option C and domino C that has fallen. Because now we know where the young rookie first overall selection in the draft, Eric Fisher, will be playing. He'll be playing the right side at right tackle. Now, this is not a long-term solution. Trust me, you don't draft a guy number one overall to play right tackle. So this might be a one-year deal where he comes in, gets his feet wet, the right tackle position. If he is dominant like the Chiefs think he will be at the right side, guess what? Next year, when Brendan Albert is looking for that long-term deal, they will move Eric Fisher over to the left side, and a guy like Donald Stevenson will probably move into that right tackle position, or the Chiefs will go out and address that through free agency, through the draft, or here's another option. Brendan Albert will be your right tackle. I don't think Brendan Albert wants any part of the right tackle position. He's a guy that's looking to get paid. He's a guy that has a big ego. And look, 90% of the NFL players have a huge ego. If you're a left tackle and someone walks up to you and tells you, hey, you're a right tackle, you don't want to hear that because A, that devalues your stock. Left tackles are paid significantly more than right tackles. So that's number one. Number two, you're telling me that I can't get it done against elite pass rushers and I can't protect my quarterback's blind side. That's a slap in the face. That's a slap at my ego. And you're challenging me in my manhood. So Brendan Albert doesn't want to hear that. So I don't think he's going to take moving to the right side lightly. I think this is his last year in Kansas City. So he's going to play the left side this year. Look for Fisher to be on the right side. And then next year, look for Fisher to make that move over to left. And the Chiefs to either fill that with a guy that's already on the roster, a la Donald Stevenson, or they'll go out and address it through uh, the means of free agency or the draft. But very interesting dynamic. Dolphins handle their tackle situation. Chiefs now have no choice but to handle theirs as well. Speaking of tackles, Let's move to Jacksonville and the number two overall selection in the 2013 NFL Draft. Fisher went one to the Chiefs. We just talked about their tackle situation. Let's talk about the second pick in the draft, another tackle, Luke Jokel. You don't draft a tackle number two in the draft and make him a right tackle. And so while Eugene Monroe has been a solid fixture at the left tackle position for the Jacksonville Jaguars, I think that was actually a pick well spent by the Jacksonville Jaguars, his days at left tackle might be numbered if, in fact, Luke Jokel makes the transition to right tackle seamlessly, comes in, dominates. We might have a flip-flop on our hands because, again, you don't spend number two overall selections on a right tackle. It just isn't the way it works in the National Football League. So far, so good, it seems like, out of Jaguars camp. They had their rookie mini camp. And Joko looked to be very spry at the right tackle position. Of course, that means absolutely nothing. There are no pads. Really, nothing but helmets. There's no physical contact. He just looked good. Footwork was probably solid. Again, to me, Joko is the most finished product of all the tackles that were at the top of this draft to be selected. So, when someone tells me he went out and he performed well, it doesn't surprise me. To me... Of all the tackles, he was the most NFL-ready in this draft. And so, Jaguars got a really good product. And Joko, he's going to play the right side in 2013. Is he going to be over there for years beyond 2013? I'm not sure of that. If you put a gun to my head and made me take a stab at it, i say absolutely not. Much like Fisher, you get the rookie season at right tackle to get your feet wet, to adjust to the speed of the National Football League. You play less explosive athletes on that right side, kind of getting you prepared for the huge leap over to the left side, where not only is the weight of the whole offensive line on your shoulders, you have to protect the blind side of the quarterback, 
but you're facing more explosive athletes that can get after the quarterback. Higher caliber outside linebackers and defensive ends who, frankly, are monsters in this league. And so we'll see how that shakes out. But right now, Fisher and Joko both are going to be on the right side to start out their careers. Much like Tyron Smith was for Dallas, we saw that his transition didn't go as well to the left side. If you're a Jacksonville Jaguars fan or a Kansas City Chiefs fan, you're hoping you don't go down the same route that the Dallas Cowboys did with Tyron Smith. So that leads us to our extra point. It's a touchdown. Go ahead. Throw it up. Don't be afraid. Throw it up. I'm going to tackle this quick extra point. So I can't help but get a big kick out of this. <laughs> NFL veterans begging for work. Stop it. Cut it out. <laughs> it is so hard to watch. Now, I'm more tolerable to Charles Woodson begging for work. Here's a guy that's been in the league for about 14, maybe 15 years, has been really good. And even his last year, while it wasn't great and did have some injury issues, he was still a really solid football player, a guy that can help your football team. And I expect him to get a phone call somewhere near the summertime. He's not on an NFL roster right now, but come June, July, when camps get underway, a guy goes down in the first week of camp, he'll get a phone call, he'll be on someone's roster. In August, he just needs to stay in shape. But don't beg. Charles is out there begging for work. God, I don't know what's going on. My phone isn't ringing. Charles, I hear you. I know you want to still play. You'll get a phone call. Be patient. Now, Terrell Owens, on the other hand, <laughs> stop it. Stop begging. Don't. It looks bad on, on all fronts. And you're done. Can you still play in this league? Yeah, you probably could. Does anyone want to put up with the T.O. experience? No. Those days are over with. You're no longer worth the headache. Six years ago, Teams were willing to put up with the headache because they knew they were getting a guy that was going to catch 80 balls for over 1,200 yards and 10 touchdowns. That's no longer the case. Your best days are behind you. Why would I want to put up with your shenanigans when I can get a guy that looks just like you, but 12 years younger, 13, 14 years younger, no headache, and a lot cheaper? What sense does that make? So for you to go out petitioning the Patriots, oh, that would make a great combination, Belichick and Brady and, and my track record. No one wants you on their football team. No one wants you. Stop it. It's embarrassing. Okay? <laughs> Stop begging. You don't see Chad Johnson begging for work. He got one opportunity. He blew it. You got one opportunity with the Seahawks. You blew it. You couldn't catch the football. And you've never had the best hands in the world. But you were dropping footballs left and right. You got an opportunity and you blew it. You let Braylon Edwards beat you out for the final receiver spot in Seattle. That was it. That was your curtain call. You blew it. As for Chad Johnson, he blew it in Miami. Perfect situation. They had no receivers. They were starving for a guy to come in and be a number one. He had that opportunity. He blew it. Has some off-the-field domestic issues. Lost that position. He's no longer welcome in the National Football League as well. You don't see him begging, though. He'd love an opportunity to get back in the league. But he's not begging. You need to stop. Charles, you're better than that. You need to stop begging as well. If it's meant to be, it'll be. Soon. <laughs> and that's going to do it for me here in the lab room. Thank you for joining me here on this program. As always, I would love for you to... Like me on Facebook. In the Lab Room is the Facebook page. Check it out. Every single video I've ever done and uploaded is on the Facebook page. So check it out. There's also the Twitter page. At In the Lab Room is the Twitter handle. Please follow me on Twitter. Also, there's the YouTube page. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so to the page. Louis T is the YouTube page. Type it in. All my shows will pop up. Subscribe to the show. Also, there's the inbox. In the lab room at gmail.com 
is the inbox. If you drop a comment on any one of my videos, you do anything on my Facebook page or on Twitter, it comes directly to the inbox. But if you want to skip all of those steps and come directly to the inbox, feel free in the lab room at gmail.com. Once again, is the inbox. So I also write for a blog site called beforethesnap.com. I also do a podcast for the site beforethesnap.com. Check it out. I'm currently doing the NFC East as a blogger for that site, and I'm uploading as we speak a couple of articles that I've written on the draft for each team in the NFC East. So check out the site beforethesnap.com. We do a podcast that's uploaded every Wednesday. We talked extensively about the draft on the podcast last Wednesday and the Wednesday before that. So check it out. A lot of good content on that website as well. So please, if you have a minute, check it out. And so that's going to do it for me here in the lab room. Please, if you get a second, I'm doing the 2013 NFL Draft Wrap-Up Series. Check that out. Each team will be talked about. Their draft will be broken down and given a grade. So I'm in the process of doing that. I'll be uploading two more teams today. And as I've said, it's two a days. So every day, two more teams coming at you. So be on the lookout for that as well. I'll do that until I wrap up every single team in the National Football League. Thank you for joining me here today. And as always, take care of yourself. Have a good one. And if it's in the National Football League, whether big or small, we cover it all here in the lab room. Have a good one.